In the last lecture, we had an overview of automatic differentiation. And in this lecture, we will cover a computational graph, the language of automatic differentiation. For automatic differentiation, the computational graph is a directed acyclic graph, which means that the edges has a direction and also the graph has no loops. And in this computational graph, the edge represent the data. Uh, which can be a scanner, or vector, or matrix, or high-dimensional tensor. And each node is a function that consumes several incoming edges and outputs some values. And then without a loss of a generality, we can assume that each node or a function outputs only one uh, edges. And for when you want to construct a uh, computational graph, you look at expressions. So for every expression, this is just a function. So you add a new node in the computational graph. And also I have a blue box here to re uh, represent the very primitive uh, variables uh, because they, they are not the output of any nodes. They can be updated in the uh, optimization process as we will show later. So let's try to build a computational graph for computing this expression. The first step is to identify the, uh, the first computation you need to carry out. And this is the x plus x2 and also x2 squared. And as I said, if those variables do not have, uh, are not the output of a load, you just uh, use a uh, blue box for them to mark them as a primitive variables. And for example, we have uh, x1 plus x2, and this is the operator that takes x1 and x2. So I added a new node and also you have x squared I added another node and for the next step you apply sign operation to x1 plus x2 so you add another node and you get the sign x1 and x2 output and a similar for this part and finally you also have a plus sign so this for this plus sign you also need to add a node and you get this z so you can see it is very easy to co uh, construct a computational graph from expression so what do we care about the computational graph? This is because automatic differentiation works by propagating gradients in the computational graph. There are basically two modes. Let's consider a simple example here. This is a very straight line uh, computational graph. Uh, it does not have this kind of train stu structure or very complex structure. And for there are two modes. The first mode is to propagate the gradients forward uh, to, to uh, to indicate what I mean here, let's consider a specific load, uh, this orange node here. The orange node outputs W, so the W is not the node, because as we said, the node is a function. So W is actually the output of this node, and it will also have a Z, and the Z is the output of this node. And in the forward mode, uh, you propagate the gradients forward, that means assume that you already know the gradients of z with respect to your primitive variable and you want to propagate this edge to this edge that means you propagate this gradients to partial w which is the output of this node with respect to the primitive variable x and how do you do that this is the chain rule partial w over partial x how do you express that by partial z partial x and this, uh, this is just uh, by, by the chain rule, using composition rule, you can uh, do this calculation. And the reverse mode works backwards. Uh, let's also look at this node. So you, at this point, you are given the derivative of y with respect to w, which is partial y, partial w here. You want to propagate this gradient backward at, to this edge. And for this edge, the gradient should be partial y and partial z. So how do you compute this gradient? given this gradients, also the chain rule. So in that sense, the forward and the backward propagation works similarly using chain rules, but the direction is quite different. So why do we have two modes for this kind of a computation? This is because different uh, uh, simulations might have different uh, structures, so we might uh, uh, employ different uh, strategies. For example, if I have a graph like this, if uh, for this kind of a graph, you, you have a very uh, you have just a one variable uh, in the beginning, and also one, uh, uh, and at the last output, it, it spreads to different output channels. 
And in this case, the forward mode would be uh, more efficient because you can say you propagate the gradients here, you propagate it here, and finally you just propagate it into different ways. And if you think about the back propagation, if you want to compute the gradients of output one with, with respect to the x1, and then you have to compute the, this edge first, and then back propagate this edge to this one, and then back propagate back. But for x2, you have to compute this uh, edge first. However, you cannot reuse the gradients that is back propagated from output one. So you have to redo all the calculations from scratch, and also for x3 and x4, x5. So that means for reverse mode automatic differentiation, you have to do five times uh, back propagation. But for forward mode, you only need to do once for this known chain. And then finally, you just do a small calculation here to propagate the gradients from this node to the final output. And then this is similar for many to one uh, main pins. In this case, the back propagation is more uh, efficient. That is, this kind of a graph is more uh, adaptable to reverse mode automatic differentiation. That's the reason why we need two different kinds of uh, modes of automatic differentiation.